Hi, so I recently had to move some sample library content from Steinberg libraries because I was reorganizing my hard disks. And even though it was quite easy to do, you do have to know what the best way is to do this. So I decided to make a video about it. So if you need to move Steinberg sample library content or may want to do so in the future, or maybe it's just time for a full spring cleanup of your hard disks, let's go. Now, first of all, you may think, well, I never bought a Steinberg sample library, but you may be surprised as sample libraries are part of some of the extensions of Cubase that you get for free with Cubase Pro, for example. If I look at my download assistant here, and if I look at the products that were part of my Cubase Pro 13 installation, you can see that there is the actual Cubase application, but you see that much more is installed. For example, Hellion Sonic, Groove Agent, and over here, I even installed some additional content sets over here as well. I think I installed these specifically to be able to run the Cubase demo songs. But as you can see, it's pretty easy to install additional content. And if you have not set your default path for that content correctly, it may be installed in a location that you do not want it in. So the way to manage that content later is by using the Steinberg Library Manager, which is a separate application that was likely installed when you installed your other Steinberg software. But you can also find it as a separate download on the Steinberg website. I'll leave a link below. So let's have a look at the library manager, which looks like this. So as you can see, I have separate tabs over here for the various Steinberg applications that may install additional content. And for Hellion, I have, for example, installed Amped Electra. I have the Claps Vault from Dom Segalis, Iconica Sketch, the recent Symphonic Library, which was part of Cubase 13, Lo-Fi Piano, etc. Now, before you do anything or try to manage this content via this library manager, it's important that you first close all applications that may be using this content so that the files are not locked and the library manager can move and access them correctly. Now, other options that you have is that you can search for certain content. Maybe if you have a lot of it, you can choose a different sorting of all the items in these lists. And what you can also do is that you can set the library default locations. So when any new content set gets installed, it will use this default location. And for me, that's on a separate hard disk in which I have a directory called Hellion Sonic Lips. Now on the right side for each sample library, you see three buttons. And if you click the detail button, you can see the details about which sound containers with the extension VST sound here in the file name are part of this library. And in this case, it's only one. And it's in eHellion Sonic Lips Dom Sigala's Claps Fault, and then the name of the file. And by the way, I couldn't really find a manual as part of the library manager, but there is a separate manual downloadable for this library manager. So if you want to really get into the nitty gritty detail, I suggest you use the download of the PDF and check the manual. I will leave the link down below in the description. Now by now, if you like this video or find it useful at all, please give it a big thumbs up so that it gets shown to more people. Subscribe to the channel and ring the little bell icon when you get notified when I publish another video. If you're really enjoying the channel and want to support me even more, you can consider using the super thanks button below the video, which is kind of a virtual tip jar. Or another great way to do that is by using the affiliate links in the description to one of these stores. If you click one of these links before buying anything in these stores, I will get a small commission without any additional cost to you, which is a great help. But let's get back to the Steinberg Library Manager. Now, if you want to move one of these content sets, then you can do so by using the move button over here. As you can see, I can select a new location. Let's, for example, make an additional directory in here called test and select this folder. The Claps Vault by Dom Segalis has now been moved to this new test location. And if you look at my hard disk in the test directory, you can now see the VST sound file from Domsey Gallus's Claps Vault, and it's no longer in the original directory that it was in. So the content has been moved. Now it's also possible to move multiple content sets at the same time. You can do so by first selecting which items you want to move, then clicking the move button and selecting a different location. I'm not going to do that now, but in the same way, all four content sets will then be moved to the new location. Furthermore, it's also possible to move all content sets and you can do that by alt clicking the checkbox over here. You can see that it then selects all content sets in the same application category that is. And again, you can then push move on one and move all of them at the same time to a new location. 
Now, what are reasons that you may want to move some of this content? Well, initially you may have installed a lot of Steinberg sample libraries without realizing where they would be installed. So you may have installed them in the wrong location and this is then the way to fix it. Another reason could be that you may want to improve the performance of your system and you bought a new faster SSD drive, for example, to put these sample libraries on and then you can move them from your original drive to that new SSD drive for faster access. Or maybe you want to clean up some of these libraries from your hard disk. And if you want to do that, then you can just use the remove button for each sound library that you can see over here. Now, if there are any issues with your sound library, for example, when you have manually moved a VSD sound file, not via the library manager, let's try that. For example, you just saw that I moved the clap fault file to a test directory. Let's manually move that back to where it was originally. So now it's in the original directory. And after restarting the library manager, you can see that there's a little red warning icon over here. And you can also see the specific library which has the warning icon. If I now click this, it says resolve warnings. And then the resolve issues dialog provides you with the possible solutions that the library manager finds. And in our case, it says optimize library registration. And if I now click on details, you can see that it has actually found the location that I manually moved this library to. The warning is gone and the link in the library manager has been restored. Now, if you want to know more nitty gritty details about Cubase, I have many videos on my channel. And this one over here discusses Cubase audio files. Where are they on your hard disk? How are they related to events, Cubase regions, clips, etc. Check it out. Enjoy and see you soon.